All right. Well, today I wanted to talk about the parent pill. One of the most important life decisions you ever make is choosing the right parents. Super important because choosing the wrong parents can really hurt you in life. Choosing the right parents is more important than choosing who you marry. You really want to take your time with it, shop around, and really do the number crunching and take into account things like height, looks, intelligence, athleticism, personality, special talents when you make your decision. But what if I can't choose my parents? Like, how do I do that, Cletus? Well, son, first you need to figure out how to build a time machine. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, I don't know how to do it either. I guess you're just shit out of luck, bud. All right, thanks, Cletus. I've always found it fascinating that you're a combination of your parents' genetics that are passed down to you. You're not really you, so to say, as much of a collection of your parents' physical and mental attributes melded into one. It's honestly like extremely sad that some people are born with like extremely great advantages and other people are dealt with just a really bad hand solely based on genetics and who their parents are. Like on one hand, you have like Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen as an example. Tom is like debatedly the best quarterback in the NFL and Giselle was the world's highest paid model. With Giselle's looks and Tom's athletic ability, height and good looks, their kids are just going to have like so many advantages in life, it's just not even funny. You know, Giselle was 5'11", Tom was 6'4", so their kids are probably going to end up being super tall. They also get a combination of their parents' looks, so they'll have that like extreme advantage as well. And they're also going to inherit Tom's athletic genes. Like, I'm calling it now, like... It's probably likely that one of Tom's sons will end up playing in the NFL. Like, I'm just putting it out there years ahead of time that, that that's going to happen. Come back to this video. I was the first to guess it. <laughs> You're not going to be Tom Brady's son and not end up being a professional athlete. If they have a daughter, she's probably going to end up being a model. Or if they do have a daughter, she's probably going to end up being a model, mainly because of Giselle's looks. You know, your genetics give you a baseline of potential in different areas of life, and they open doors that wouldn't be opened if you had inherited a slightly different chromosome. And Tom Brady made multi millions throughout his NFL career, and Giselle, you know, also made hundreds of millions. So, from a monetary perspective, like those kids are set for life. The same can be said about, like, take like Donald Trump and Melania, like their son. He's already set. Like, he was already set for life coming out of the womb. You know, Donald being 6'3", uh, Melania being 5'11". Like, it's no no coincidence that that kid ended up being, like, 6'7". He had a combination of their looks. And, yeah, he's, he's set for life, basically coming out of the wound. And on the other hand, if you weren't so lucky, and you were, let's just say as an example, you were born as, like, a 5'1" ugly guy in poverty to parents who had, you know, very low intelligence, no athletic ability, no special talent. Like your lot in life is going to be extremely difficult. Like that particular kid is going to get bullied viciously, will always struggle with dating, is going to massively struggle financially due to just being born in poverty, not having that that head start that, you know, Tom Brady's kids or or you know, Donald Trump and Melania's kids as an example. Um, and, you know, that kid having, you know, having low intelligence as well. And that kid's life is going to be extremely tough. And, like, he won't even have, like, 0.001% of the potential as someone who came from parents like Tom Brady and Giselle. And I know those are polar opposite examples. And most people are somewhere in the middle when it comes to things like height, looks, intelligence, athleticism, talent. You know, these these attributes that personality, what personality characteristics you get, like all these attributes that like massively impact your life. But, you know, your parents genetics that are passed down to you just affect you in so many ways. Like it's not even funny. I mean, it's no it's no coincidence that there are a lot of brothers and father son duos that played in the NBA as well as the NFL. It's no coincidence that Eli Manning and Peyton Manning came from the same parents and both have Super Bowl rings. Or, like, you know, it's no coincidence that John Jones was a UFC champion and his brother Chandler, was, you know, played and did very well in the NFL. It's, it's also no coincidence that, you know, like an example of like Billy Ray Cyrus and Molly Cyrus 
are were both successful musicians. It's no coincidence that you know most people's parents are pretty much spitting images of their kids. Not all the time, but but most of the time. Like any time that I've met a girl's parents, they both they the parents look like the girl in different ways, and you can see what features they got from their dad and what features they got from their mom. And it's usually a pretty even split most of the time. I mean, this isn't always the case, but in the vast majority of cases from either meeting a girl's parents or just a friend's parents growing up, you can clearly tell that they're related in pretty much almost all cases that I've seen. The kid inherits pretty much every trait from the parents. In my case, it's interesting. You know, my dad was 6'2", my mom was 5'4", and I ended up being 6'2 and a half barefoot, so I kind of lucked out in the height department genetically. My dad, he had like a kind of like a lean athletic body with like wider shoulders, and I ended up pretty much having the exact same build as my dad. And it didn't matter, you know, how much I worked out to try to change my physique. I always, I could, I could put on muscle, but I always had the same similar build that he had. Growing up, my dad had blonde hair and blue eyes when he was younger. And my mom had always had hazel eyes and brown hair. And I didn't, so I took it, took it, I took after my dad when it came with the height and the body, but I took an, I took after my mom's like hazel eyes, brown hair, and her facial features. So it's it's not always the case that you, and my dad and my brother, he, he didn't, he is, my brother is about 5'11". He actually has a very uh, much skinnier type build, but he inherited more of my dad's uh, facial features. So it's not that you always inherit the same facial features from one parent, but it's kind of like you inherit like a mixture of features from both. And it's, it's always interesting how that, how that happens. How I got unlucky was that male pattern baldness, you know, it runs in my family on both sides, uh, my mom's side and my dad's side, my, my mom's, you know, my grandfather, on my mom's side, um, you know, he was like, a, I could you say like a Norwood five, Norwood six, you know, I look back at like my, my grandmom's, you know, father and, he was also, you know, balding in his pictures from like the 1940s, 1930s. So, you know, the genetic code goes back that far that like male pattern baldness was like just destined for me. And, you know, luckily I was able to restore my hair by getting hair transplants, but that was set in my genetic code. Like nobody wakes up one day and says, hey, I want to start losing my hair. It's just it's, you know, it's in your genetics and it's just bound to happen. And from a personality standpoint, I find it interesting. My parents were always more introverted and I also inherited that gene. Um, I remember my dad was always good at Jeopardy and could remember the most like random history facts and dates. And I also have a similar memory where I can remember like super small details. This can come in handy in some ways, but in other ways it just feels like unnecessary information to kind of store you know the point is that you can look at your parents like physical and mental characteristics and see those how you are the way you are down to the knit and grit and on my mom's side of the family there are a lot of really overweight people and i went through a phase where i got very overweight and i think i think um you know genetically for myself I'm very susceptible to gaining a lot of weight in a very short period of time, you know, because of my mom's side of the family. And um, a lot of them are very, very, you know, still overweight to the, this day. So like obesity runs on that side of the family. So for me, I have to be very, I have to really watch what I eat because I can gain weight super easily if I'm eating a bunch of junk food, which I eat junk food still, but I have to be very, very regimented to not put on those, those pounds. And I don't think, I don't exactly think that I got a bad hand in life, but I definitely got handed down some bad genetics. And truth be told, I wish I didn't have the male pattern baldness gene. And I also wish that I was more, you know, naturally outgoing you know, like I said, both my parents were introverts and, you know, it was kind of like we had to be dragged to like a, um, a family party or a neighborhood party. Uh, at least they were, um, you know, I, I can be very outgoing, but I really have to like turn it, try to turn it on. 
And I, I naturally feel drained after being around people for more than four or five hours. Like I can be very social for a couple hours, but then like my social battery just gets depleted. And I noticed that with my parents as well. Like whenever we would, our neighbors growing up had, had like a 4th of July party and we would go every year growing up. And my parents were very social in the first hour, but after that hour, like they were kind of in the corner, you know, just, just chilling out, relaxing. And that's kind of how I naturally am as well. Like I can turn on, I can, you know, turn on the social battery. I can, you know, do well in social situations, but you, you know, give me three hours and I'm mentally, I'm just exhausted. And I think that's a genetic trait that, you know, I just inherited and, as much as you try to change, you know, the, change your your personality, or you try to change, you know, how you act, you, you have like a certain genetic base that you just can't fight after a while. And I know I'd probably be better off if I was never given the male pattern baldness gene or the, you know, propensity to gain a lot of weight. I probably wouldn't have gone through that period of my life. And I'd probably be better off if I had the extrovert gene, especially now that I've like looks maxed and really maxed out my appearance. Um, I'm sure my life would be way, way better. And I, I could really have a lot more opportunity if I was naturally, you know, just more, more out, not necessarily more outgoing, but if I just had a higher social battery, if I was able to sustain that for longer, um, I feel like I could be a lot more successful in, in a lot of ways, at least socially. I think from a nurture perspective, another aspect of how you turn out is how you're raised by your parents. So this is you know, outside of the physical and mental characteristics that you you receive from your parents. Like as an example, if you have parents that have a lot of mental disorders and they raise you in a way to be somewhat like psychotic like them, you're probably going to turn out psychotic and you're you may have a you may you, know, you may have a better chance of ending up in jail or rehab or on the street uh, you know if your parents were alcoholics or did drugs growing up you're more likely to you know end up that way as a result on the flip side if your parents were mentally stable and they raised you you know to act properly and treat people well you're most likely going to turn out to be stable as well and then I think in terms of um, in terms of like monetarily, if you grew up in a wealthy household, you're going to most likely be sent to better schools. So like I had three cousins that grew up in a wealthy household and they were sent to a very prestigious private school where they lived. And through this, they all ended up going to good private college, good semi well known private colleges. And what do you know, like they all make great money now. Whereas my brother and I, you know, we grew up in a, a very working class, like more like a little lower middle class family. So we had to re really work growing up. Like I got a job at 14 and I worked throughout high school, worked throughout college, did security, dishwashing, things like that. And it definitely wasn't easy. You know, growing up, we would go on one vacation each year and we wouldn't go far, <laughs> you know, whereas they would go on multiple vacations, you know, um, each year and they would go to like these really exclusive beach towns like you know, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, you know, they would go to, I think they went to like Turks and Caicos one year. They were always going to like very exclusive places. And like, you know, my parents basically said like, Hey, we can't afford that. Like <laughs> we're going down the shore. <laughs> uh, we also have three cousins that, you know, grew up in pretty much poverty on the opposite end. Um, they lived in like a very, very small house. You know, the mom, my aunt, she didn't work. And you know, the dad, my uncle, had a very, very low paying like manual job. So, you know, they lived in this very, very small house and like growing up and they, they really struggled. And what do you know, like two of the cousins now, they live in a trailer park. So there are definitely people who come from nothing and become super wealthy. Obviously, that would be ideal. But a lot of the time, if you grew up in poverty, you know, from your parents, it's very, very hard to break out of that. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts on the parent pill and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care.